Thanks for joining us for another episode of Sailing a Recipe. I'm Colin, and this is my three girls and wife, Bex, and this is our floating home, The Recipe. Together we left home and embarked on a journey of a lifetime. After crossing oceans, we have recently been in lockdown in Antigua for the last eight months. Tune in, hit that subscribe button, and join us every Sunday to see where our recipe takes us next. Who would have thought that almost a year to this month we would have sailed into the Caribbean island of Antigua, just as Nelson did all those centuries ago, and find an honorary secondary home. Arriving early 2020 for a planned two weeks of family holidays and some minor boat maintenance, we ended up here for over 11 months. Arriving with the beautiful normalcy of free global travel, a time pre-COVID, we witnessed the famous marina full to bursting with tourist and like-minded passing sailors. Within six days of first dropping the anchor, we were faced with a hard lockdown. In hindsight, not as bad as some countries, but for a few weeks only, we were prisoned on our vessel. Stranded on our boat, and for the first time losing that sense of freedom that sailing brings. Wash our hands. Now mask wearing being the norm, and disinfectant stalls at every shop entrance became what we got used to. We are still in lockdown, clearly. This is not a fashion statement. <laughs> so we are walking through Jolly Harbour in Antigua, picking up our beloved Pugly, who is now in a box in ashes. The harshness soon weakened and we were allowed to collect takeaway pizza from the local pizzeria, which soon became our staple treat and valued friends. Anchored off Pigeon Beach, Falmouth Harbour with other sailors, all in the same situation, we merrily made boat buddies of neighbouring anchored yachties, who like us showed no sign of the dreaded virus that was spreading around the globe. With the outgoing nature of our girls, we soon made friends with the parents of kids. These boats were to play a huge part in our happiness and solace during the restricted times of COVID. We learnt to kite surf, a sport that takes patience and time, a luxury we found in abundance. As the year went on, we celebrated kids' birthdays by cooking group barbecues on remote beaches and found places that others didn't and enjoyed our own little private paradise. With lockdown easing, we felt the frozen travel melting away, allowing us to sail to the other sister island of Barbuda. It was there that the inevitable discussion of future travel and hurricane planning took place. COVID has thrown many a spanner in our works and we had not planned sufficiently to consider the global restrictions in time. We clearly could see our boat buddies were planning to move on and we needed to have a plan to get out of the uninsurable hurricane season in Antigua. Do we go north to Charleston, USA or south to Grenada? We were granted a visa waiver by US Customs and Immigration for six months to enter the USA. We sailed away from Antigua with thoughts that this was the end of our Antiguan chapter. Well, I've just come out of the back of my first night watch in six months. You know, we've been in the Caribbean, we've been day sailing, we haven't been doing any overnight passages, and of course with lockdown, you're in lockdown. Uh, you can't sail anywhere. It's, um, it's been quite difficult doing the first night sail after six months. I'm knackered. Uh, we, of course, are on our way to St. Thomas uh, due to collect some visas uh, or visa waivers and uh, start making our way back to the US. What a long journey this is gonna be. But it is nice to be on the water. It's so beautifully calm, not a soul. There's not much wind. As you can see, the sails are struggling just to billow. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a nice morning. A 30 hour sail to St. Thomas in the USVIs was met with disaster due to our houseboat batteries wanting to explode.
Oh my god, these batteries are cooked. They are roasting hot, they stink, they're melted, and by the looks of it, they're just gonna catch fire any minute. I knew I could smell some sort of chemical smell. It absolutely stinks. Oh my god, I can't believe we are probably 70 miles from shore. We need to head to St. Thomas and get somewhere safe. This is just absolutely a disaster. I don't know what, what would cause this. Maybe the alternator, solar chargers. Shiza. Once safely moored, we left the disabled recipe and arranged repairs. Okay, we've got to hire a car for a few days while the boat is being repaired. We're at a nice little villa in a bay and we're going to see if we can discover some of the islands. <laughs> Where are we going? I don't know. Going to Mountain Top Viewpoint. As news of the fast increasing cases in the USA got to us in the USVI, the flights were beginning to close down to and from the UK. Continuing on in order to escape hurricane season was fast becoming a fading option. It was not a difficult decision to sail back to Antigua, where we knew the inner workings of the island and had made some great friends. Sailing back to Antigua was one of the most brutally unpleasant experiences we have yet had. Thunderstorms, rain, 40 knots of wind in our face, and we doubted that we had made the best decision at all. What do you reckon, Pop? It was horrible. I was puking my guts up. <laughs> As well as the crew, the boat took an absolute battering. So we decided to break this journey up into three, stopping in Saba, which is a Dutch island, and then finding a final refuge place within St. Kitts where we could all find something to eat, watch the sun go down, and get ready for our journey tomorrow. Checking back into Antigua, in St. John's this time, we had a little bit of a different experience. Negative COVID tests in hand, a strangely surreal and quiet check-in process. But this time we were back and we were not strangers. Far from the busy and bustling marina that we had left, we arrived to be the only boat anchored off Pigeon Beach. We were one of only a handful of boats in the marina who had found the only option was to sit out hurricane season with trepidation. This was new to us and we were insecure about our decisions and found ourselves closely scrutinising the weather systems as they formed over the Northern Atlantic on a daily basis. Wind swept Harry, Woo! it's going to get windy. So we are, I think, boat ready now. We've taken the sails down. Well, we needed to because they're getting repaired. We've tied up everything we need. We've taken in everything we need. And I think we've got here just in time because I can smell it in the air. I think the storm is on its way. Um, again, this is what we, we, we didn't really sign up for. We're not insured to be in this area for named tropical storms. So uh, we are, again, like I said, we're, we're hurricane dodging. Uh, going all the way south, but unfortunately it's better than going all the way to uh, the east coast of the States. So that's why we're doing here. So we know what we were doing. Uh, we know the risk we've taken. Uh, we're just going to manage it the best we can. Vibrating. Shuddering. And my God, is it howling outside. So we're just going to go have a look. But we were dealt a kind hand. We came unscathed many times from oncoming storms that shot north of us in their final hundred miles, only causing us rain and a dusting of thunderstorms. We took full advantage of the quiet, now seemingly unpopulated Antigua. We ate in empty restaurants, drank in what seemed like our own private bars, 
giving way to building new friendships with the land living locals and restaurant owners. As hurricane season drew to a close, we found that UK flights were opening up and it was time for family and friends to visit. My sister and family came out for a week and joined in with our new found local friends. We even managed to persuade our parents to travel out to the Caribbean. They were a little cautious travelling in these uncertain times and were rightly worried to, about being infected with this global virus. Only after a couple of hours in the sun, they soon got into the swing of the Caribbean vibe. The convenience of many boat works now available due to low demand came cheap and promptly. We took advantage of space on the docks to deep clean recipe, along with giving her a new clean copper bottom and preparing her for the coming season. What do you reckon, Junior? It's looking beautiful. One more coat and it's gonna be the boss. Wait. It's gonna be like Captain Colin. <laughs> During this downtime, we really started to feel like locals and were welcome as such. Having the local knowledge of where to shop and the opening times, the best places to order the best local dishes. Having pizza delivery on tap and our friends at the local restaurant Cloggies, run by the very special Dutch couple, Vanessa and Ton, who are characters larger than life. Down, down, down. <laughs> hold on, hold on. They're not giving Seeing our daughters grow with confidence and meeting new people and casually making good friends made us proud of who they are becoming, strong young women who can hold their own and experience these moments with each other as sisters. Losing our pugs within months of each other was rough. One of old age and the other heat exhaustion, we really missed the sound of pattering feet on the deck and cuddling up during overnight passages. They were so missed. But having local support and finding vets, etc., was all made easier. This void of having no four legged friend was swiftly filled with a local rescue. Moon. Um, we found a, a home, basically, a, it's a, it's a kennel for dogs, basically, a rescue for, for, for dogs. It's called Paws. So I've just driven past it, so we've stopped the car. I'm going to see what kind of dogs there are. Now, normally when I do this, I come home with a dog. So I don't want, or sometimes two dogs, but uh, I don't really want to come home with one. I just want to check out and see what kind of dogs there are and see what state they're in. Um, so you never know. Christmas might be with the dog. Christmas is not just for, sorry, dogs are not just for Christmas. They are for life. Well, can you please put the New crew member. She's a little bit nervous right now. She's a bit nervous. She'll be okay. Good girl. Good <laughs> wagon. No. <laughs> As the weather turned cooler in the winter months, we again started to plan our next journey. International flights home. We had booked our flights for the UK for Christmas and New Year's Eve, spending as much needed time with family back home and giving the girls some much needed time with their friends. The worst part about being on a boat would be saying goodbye to really good friends. And also just missing family from home. Covid's really affected um, our family and friends because we were going to go home in the summer but then we didn't go, end up going because of Covid and then we were going to go home for Christmas but our, our flights got cancelled because of Covid so we don't really know when we'll be going home but there are a few good things about not going home 
because we've made some really good friends here in Antigua. We've got to know Antigua a lot better. Um, we learnt how to scuba dive. We are perfecting kite surfing. And um, yeah, it's like a second home. <laughs> I'm about to get the champagne going. These are my nice glasses. Champagne and books, Fizz. From my uh, sister in law. 7.30 in the morning, that's how we start. <laughs> With newfound friends and the news of us not being able to fly home for Christmas, we were invited to spend Christmas Antiguan style. Our McGurran Christmas morning ritual of lavish breakfast and champagne, followed by the swift ripping open of Christmas presents and then preparing for our fancy dress Christmas day. With many of the Christmas traditions, including mistletoe and holly, we had a large family table overlooking the Caribbean Sea and basking in the warm sunshine. On the menu, Christmas traditional trimmings complete with Brussels sprouts and cranberry sauce, generously laid on by Serena and Dean, Simon and Helen, with additional table goodies brought for our, up from our other guests from other countries. This all ending in a very surreal Christmas Day midnight pool party. Look at that. Look at that Tano, sexy bum cheek there. Look at that. Ooh. December was a month to remember, full of a number of birthdays, spending them either in restaurants, bars, houses, complete with reggae bands, and of course on recipe. The socialising seemed relentless as New Year's Eve was. Having talked my sister into again coming out, she arrived in time for New Year's Eve. This spontaneous decision to pop out to see us turned out to be just as the UK went into another full lockdown. We managed to persuade her to throw caution to the wind, literally, and stay with us, sail to the Bahamas, where she could then catch her flight home. That flight deadline that she had for the Bahamas was the catalyst to make us decide to move on from Antigua. This meant revealing the fact that we had a departure date to all those close friends we had made. We entertained the local tourist attractions that we had otherwise ignored, Stingray City being our favourite. Antigua contributes greatly towards envi the environmental well-being of marine life and so we of course happily paid our dues and spent the day in awe of these beautiful animals. My dad doesn't like seeing birds in cages, but these are really quite special. Do you remember the chap in Gibraltar we saw who had two of the blue and yellow ones on his boat? Oh yes. What a pirate. Oh, that's a pirate parrot, isn't it? Oh, it's a beautiful red one. Oh, he's, he's called Rainbow. <laughs> Hello. And the one next to it is Lucky. So that's Rainbow, look at that. Hello. What's that? Baba. He'd love this, especially the parrots. Maybe not the stingrays, but uh. Did he shit himself? Scott's just dropped his brain because the parrot turned on him. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> what happened? Scott, all big and serious, is like holding the camera. And the Bally parrot. And the parrot just goes and Scott just <laughs> drops his phone. Are you scared of that little parrot, Scotty? <laughs> just as we were preparing to sail out and leave Antigua waters for the last time. We had one more gem. 
We're anchored off Gallium Beach, off the English Dockyard, which is the old historical uh, Nelson's Navy base. And we're waiting for the Atlantic rowers to come in. We've got a team coming in in the next few minutes, latitude 35. Um, they're, they're, they're British, right? No, they're American. Oh, are they? They're an, yeah, I believe they're an American team. Right. And they're, um, everybody's standing up on the battlements and they have um, flares going. So we're gonna go and get our boat horn out. It's an amazing. And celebrate them coming in. It's an amazing feat, isn't it, what they're doing? Absolutely amazing. We were talking about it last night, and what do you think, after 35 days at sea, you'd want? The girls all figured they'd want a dirty burger. Um, I think I'd, I think number one would be a bath for me, just to lie in clean water <laughs> and use a loo. I think using a loo would be sitting on a loo. <laughs> that would be what you'd want. We were blessed to be there to watch the first couple of boats arrive. It was wonderful to see the, their euphoria and the outstanding welcome that Antigua gave those rowers as they came into Nelson's dockyard. And I'm sure they deserved an extra special burger and a pint on arrival. Like all good things, they must come to an end. And we had to remind ourselves that the journey we had started almost two years ago was to do exactly this, move on. With the hope that we will be true to our word and see them all again in the not too distant future. Even Alison realized how many great dear friends we had made on this fabulous island. Bex met an old school friend and our crazy Tim and Jess will I hope catch up with us soon, perhaps in Mexico. So we came to Antigua to visit the recipe for New Year's Eve. Unfortunately, it would seem that there's a massive lockdown back in the UK, so we opted to, to spend our lockdown here. Did you say unfortunately? Fortunately, we're going to spend our next few weeks of the lockdown here in the Caribbean whilst we travel north as crew on the recipe to then finally make our way back home if we can fly. So what you're saying is <clears throat> your, end, your holiday's now ended, now you're a member of crew and you're sailing to the Bahamas on the recipe. We are. Is that bad or good? It's amazing. Now, I don't what think an my, opportunity. I don't think my sister is a sailor. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm not looking forward to um, <laughs> any long passage. I'm used to being on a boat that goes for two hours. Not so this will, this will be five days. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm kind of hoping I can see land on the horizon and that no marlins come up and spear through the um, canopies. It would be, would be good and no sharks in the Bahamas. Otherwise I don't think I'll go in the sea again. Yeah, unfortunately there are plenty of sharks in the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, so I'll spend the next week in the sea in Antigua and that'll be it. Okay. Thanks a million everyone for tuning in again this week. Subscribe to next week to see how Alison, my sister, gets on with her maiden voyage in big waters, rocky seas, explains her views on her sailing, uh, where we finally managed to get to the Bahamas and see that beautiful blue water.